what's up guys welcome back to fisher hex this is travis here in today's video i'm going to be showing you step by step how i set up a new coral and invert quarantine system here in the fish room specifically for my new 300 gallon build now my plan is for anything that's going uh, to be going into that tank regarding coral and inverts will go through a 30 day uh, quarantine period in this tank before touching the main display now you guys know that i'm big on quarantine i already uh, take care of all my fish through a separate system that you guys have seen in previous videos and in this one i just really want to hammer down the reasons why you should be quarantining your coral and your inverts because i've already found some stuff that would have really negatively impacted my 300 gallon build so let's go ahead and get started all right, when it came to building this setup, I really just wanted to go as simple as I possibly could. I went ahead and picked up a 20 gallon tank from the Petco dollar per gallon sale. And you guys know that whenever I do a build that's under 40 gallons, I usually get that uh, tank during that sale period just because saving money is always the best way to go. Now, I also picked up a Aquion heater and the Aquion hang on the back filter. Now, the hang on the back filter is simply going to be uh, helping with some surface agitation as well as pulling out any kind of detritus and stuff within the water column. But the main beneficial bacteria will be on a rock, which is part of my rock that I had in the 300 gallon build or better yet part of the 300 gallon build that was just kind of left over and it was cured for uh, three months so that will be going into that tank as well as using some uh, water from my main display to kind of jump start the beneficial bacteria on that rock. As you guys know, when I start to build the system, the first thing I like to do is go ahead and paint the tank. I went ahead and used the black Rust-Oleum oil-based paint that I picked up from Home Depot and painted the back and the bottom with a couple coats. Now, while that was drying, I moved over to making the frag rack. Now, I had some leftover black egg crate from the uh, frag racks that I built for the uh, frag system there. And then if I had a dollar for every time I said frag right there, anyways. And uh, I went ahead and uh, used some leftover red PVC that I had for the 300 gallon build and actually made a, a frag rack that's a little bit higher than I usually do. And the reason why I did that is because I want to put the Pukani underneath it just to kind of save some space just in case I want to put some stuff on the bottom glass uh, regarding frag wise. And uh, yeah, it worked out great. It's definitely um, not the prettiest looking frag rack, but it definitely serves a purpose and it worked out good over the last month or so. Now, once we had everything in the tank regarding the heater, the filtration, as well as the rock and the frag rack, I went ahead and got some water from the 300 gallon display to kind of jumpstart the beneficial bacteria. Now, this rock has been cured for three months, so I'm not worried about having any excess detritus or any issues with nutrients. It simply just needs to be repopulated with beneficial bacteria. So I went ahead and did a 20 gallon water change on the 300 gallon reef and poured all of that into this tank, getting it started. Now, I did wait several days before I put some coral in the tank and the coral that I did add or just zoanthids so they were easy and they could deal with any kind of uh, fluctuations that might be taking place early on while the beneficial bacteria uh, speeds up. Now I also went ahead and threw in some inverts about a week later uh, just to kind of give something in there to uh, you know make ammonia and kind of keep the process going because I'm not going to be putting any fish in this tank at least not anytime soon. I'm thinking about maybe putting a six line ras down the road but for right now just inverts and the coral is pretty much all that's populating this tank. Now, when it comes to lighting this setup, uh, Scott at Roscoe's Reef went ahead and donated an Ocean Revive that he used to have over his system, and it works perfectly. It's all uh, self-contained. It has the timer built in, the percentages of the white and the blue, and it just works well because I do not plan on hooking up an apex of the system. It's simply going to run by itself, and uh, it worked out great with that light, so kudos to him for hooking me up. I will put a link to his channel in the description below so you guys can check out what he has going on. And uh, yeah, I love the light. It works out great. It's actually relatively low percentage because you don't need a lot of light for what I currently have in there which is uh, soft corals a couple mushrooms uh, LPS uh, hammers and stuff like that so there's nothing in there uh, there is one SPS which uh, will be transitioning over to the 300 gallon within the next week or so so I'm not really worried about keeping it at perfect conditions regarding light uh, just for a short period of time that it's in quarantine but other than that everything worked out great and I'm very happy with the setup so far all right, so the last thing I want to touch on regarding the build is what the maintenance is going to be like. Now, because it's an all-in-one and I'm using water from the 300-gallon display, I'm just going to continue doing that. Basically, every two weeks when I do a water change on the 300, I'm just going to go ahead and pull out uh, 10 gallons of water and dump it into this new tank, and giving it a 50% water change, which will replenish all the calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, and all the minor trace elements that I currently dose to that 300-gallon, which will in turn make sure that the coral are stable and doing well in this all-in-one. So I'm not really having to worry about extra dosing or anything like that it just works out great and on top of that i don't even have to use an ato because of the acrylic that i've added to the tank so there's virtually no evaporation all the water parameters are taken care of from the 300 gallon and i have an all-in-one light that takes care of the ramping as well as the on and off and that's it it takes care of itself it's very simple and uh, you guys should definitely look into building something like this for yourself 
All right, so with all that being said, let's go ahead and move on to some of the benefits of having a Coral and Invert Quarantine System, as well as some of the stuff that I have discovered over the last 30 days. Now, as you guys know, I get Coral from all over the country, which gets imported from all over the world, and I also get stuff from local hobbyists. Now, regardless of where I get it from, it always goes through the same process of being dipped, uh, re-dipped, inspected underneath the magnifying glass, and then re-dipped again. Now, I'm always looking for things that are kind of out of the ordinary, getting it off the Coral, re-dipping it, and then just making sure that it's good to go. Now, I could do this 100 times. Times, but it does not mean that the coral is completely clean now proof of that is I went through that whole process uh, with some coral that I got here locally and then I put it in the coral quarantine tank some hammers and torches that I wanted to put in the main display and uh, sure enough it went in clean and then a few days later a little baby Aptasia popped up and then of course I was like well this tank just paid for itself a thousand times because I would have just normally put that coral in my main display and then it would have infested my whole tank with Aptasia just for something that I missed that was actually so small that I had to squeeze squint to look at it and it got a better idea of what it was underneath the magnifying glass which then I removed but uh, it just goes to show that uh, you you will miss stuff and there will be eggs or there will be something that you will miss that will eventually uh, negatively impact your main display now I can go all day talking about how to clean and dip coral and get rid of parasites and identify stuff but that's not really the point of this particular video In this one I really want to drive home the fact that uh, it's well worth the investment uh, this little tank here I don't really know what the overall cost on it was it's definitely not that much but it definitely 100% paid for itself a thousand times over just by catching that one little Aptasia and preventing that from getting into my main display because who knows how it would have turned out if it got into there and uh, that's really what I want to get to is it doesn't cost a lot of money and if you truly care about your main display and the coral and your fish and all that stuff in that tank or what you even plan on adding to that tank in the future if you're just starting out then coral quarantine is your best option and the safest way to go now with all that being said guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions about my setup let me know if you want to support the channel definitely check out fishofhex.com for coral invert and t-shirt sales 10% uh, of all that stuff goes to the Reef Tank for Veterans program, so I appreciate the support. Now, if you guys have any other questions about uh, that program or anything like that, please put it in the comment section below. I will be doing a lot of update videos on some of the things that I have going on for that program, as well as my first build that I'm going to be working on here in the fish room. So either way, guys, I hope you enjoy the video, and I will see you later. Peace. <music>